Welcome footwear friends, it's Ed in Soul Bud here. Thanks for joining me on Ed Bud Running Shoe Reviews, it is always appreciated. Today I have one of my world famous running shoe yay or nay selections for you. This is a series where I tell you whether I'm going to pick up some specific forthcoming or soon to be released running shoes and review them for you. It could be that I think a specific one just isn't going to work out for me or some other shoe tuber out there is going to do it more justice, so I'll leave it to them. It's not me saying that the shoe's brilliant or it's trash, I won't know that until I get it on foot. I'm just giving you my honest opinions about the shoe, whether I'm going to grab it for review. If you haven't done so already, help the channel out by hitting that subscribe button, but also click the bell below for notifications when we launch those new videos for you. It helps us out a ton too if you give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. Or anyone else for that matter. You can help the channel out also on an ad hoc basis by giving us a super thanks. There's an icon down below, it's like a little dollar sign and a heart I think. I'd really appreciate that, helps the shoes to continue flowing in like some sort of river of rubber. First shoe today is the Pegasus Turbo Next Nature from Nike. This one looks set to launch pretty soon over here in the UK. It's up on their website, it just says coming soon, so that could be like tomorrow even. You never know. They've also used some awesome horse-related speech in the actual description of this one. It's almost goading me to include it, this stuff. Esteemed Stallion. I mean, these things have got to be nods to running shoe yay or nay, surely. Is that what you're doing here, Nike? Quite what advantage there is to this shoe over the street fly, or vice versa, is unclear. Is the inclusion of this carrier foam and the sort of glued together midsole there, <laughs> is it an advantage? Is it a bonus over the street fly? Probably think it isn't, actually. At £10 more, I do wonder just how different the two shoes will be. Early reports suggest the Pegasus Turbo Next Nature is about 270 grams in a UK 9. So if you compare that up against the Pegasus Turbo 2, which was in a UK 11, at least for me, I think that was about 260 grams. So this new Pegasus Turbo is going to be an awful lot heavier than the ones that came before. You might not care about that stuff, but I think for the Pegasus Turbo series, it's always been known as quite a nimble and light shoe. So we're going off the beaten track here with this one. Quite a different shoe by all accounts. There are some visual nods there to the older models, but performance remains to be seen. I am going to pick up a pair on this one, so it is a yay for the Pegasus Turbo Next Nature. Purely so I'm putting my money where my mouth is, really. I want to see what it's like and review it and get my thoughts out to you guys about this shoe, whether it really is a Pegasus Turbo model or it's just that by name. Shoe 2 is the Reebok Floatride Energy 4 Adventure. Quite the redesign to this model from Reebok. Whereas with the Energy 3 Adventure, it was actually relatively similar to the original version of the shoe. Just added a few extra overlays here or there and switched up the laces. This time around, we've got some significant changes to the upper and the outsole. This makes the shoe more of a versatile trail option, in my opinion. We've got increased protection there around the front of the shoe. We've got an added rubber buffer there stretches right around the front there should provide some protection to the toes reebok have also switched up the traction on the outsole apparently the traction on the outsole here is inspired by gravel bike tires that should facilitate some grip on road and varied surfaces of the trails pull tabs front and back Quite a low profile silhouette to this one and hopefully we'll have quite a low weight as well. I remember the Energy 3 Adventure wasn't really all that heavier than the original version of the shoe. It could be another winner here from everybody's value victors Reebok. I think this is set to drop in the UK relatively soon, around about 85 Earth credits I'm told. I quite like the Energy 3 Adventure, it was a non-bulky trail shoe, it didn't have too much extra stuff there. The trails in my local area aren't particularly technical although I found one that's a little bit more testing recently. Reebok have got it just right there. You haven't got too much extra stuff that I simply don't need on my shoe. So I'm hoping for similar things that I found in the Energy 3 Adventure in the version 4. It's a yay from me for the forward-thinking Reebok Energy 4 Adventure. If you do hear any strange noises on today's yay or nay, it's because I've had to open up the windows here. It's like an oven in the studio at the moment. I'm hoping none of the shoes are going to sort of fall to bits or anything. The rubber's going to fall off of them. They're all looking okay so far. But it really, really is pretty warm. Having to do all my running very early morning at the moment to get a reasonable amount of pace in there. 
Otherwise, it's just painful running in this sort of weather. Hopefully, it won't last too long and we'll get back to nice dreary grey weather here in the UK. Shoe 3. A large number of you have suggested that I check out the Adidas Solar Glide 5. So, let's do just that. An interesting shoe here with a few secrets thrown in. Never judge a book by the cover. So we've got a 10 mm drop here in the Solar Glide 5 from heel to toe, 36 mm in the heel and 26 in the forefoot. That's at least for the sample size. In mine, it'll probably be a little bit bigger than that. One big alarm for some people will be the 335 gram weight in this one. It makes it heavier than some of Nike's everyday shoes, some of Asics's everyday models. Though Adidas tend to focus on durability on their trainers and then focus more on performance in their race shoes. We have dual density boost here apparently it doesn't say where it is exactly or how it's kind of divided up you know in what sections have got slightly softer boost or firmer boost it just simply doesn't say there is some sort of frame or rail around the lateral and medial side of the heel so we've got some structural elements in there to aid in the stability of this one the shoe seems to either borrow or sort of lend elements in the heel or midfoot as per the nmd r1 lifestyle model from adidas it's perhaps a little bit too much shoe for me, this one. There seems to be a lot going on in it. I seem to be gravitating a little bit more to more simple shoes these days, like the Adios 7, for example. Some of the shoes with all the extra technology in simply just don't seem to work all that well for me, especially in these hotter conditions that we've got right now in the UK. At 120 Earth credits, it's a nay for me on the Solar Guide 5. It's just not something I need right now. I'm not sure exactly where I'd fit it into my rotation, but I can see it working for some people if you want that resilient boost material, plus you want some stabilizing elements. Last one up today, shoe number four. Loads of you have requested this one, and strangely, I seem to have overlooked it, although I can see perhaps why I've overlooked it at the moment. That is the Pegasus Trail 4 and its newly released Gore-Tex version. Now, I don't know whether Nike have just done this as a weird joke or something, but they've released this to members over here in the UK on the Nike website. And as of today, or I think it's tomorrow in the Southwest of the UK, they're actually saying there's an official drought. So you've released a waterproof Gore-Tex version of your Pegasus Trail 4 and there's a drought in the southwest of the UK. You can't really make this stuff up. I know that there are distribution problems right now with a lot of the running shoe companies, but releasing a Gore-Tex shoe right now, I just don't see it's gonna sell. 145 Earth credits as well, especially when you've just released another trail shoe that's supposedly superior with Zoom X within it, the Zagama. Maybe the standard version of the Pegasus Trail 4 might be a goer, but I'm certainly not going to be picking this one up anytime soon. I found the React in the V3 Pegasus Trail was actually some of the most squashy and compressive that there's been in any Nike shoe so far. The additional Gore-Tex upper elements here are just total overkill for me. It's not something that I need. Perhaps if you're running in extremely wet weather, if you're in another country where the climate is totally different, it might be a goer. I think others will do this one more justice as we move towards autumn and we'll get some of that wetter weather here. There'll be a lot more rain. There'll probably be like a flood then. That's how it is in the UK. It's just these extremes all the time. There's nothing in between. That's the problem. I quite enjoy this heat if it's slowly ramped up, but it doesn't do that. It's a firm nay for me on the Pegasus Trail 4 Gore-Tex. I hope you're able to sell some of these Nike because I don't see anyone picking them up right on release. <laughs> it's just far too hot right now. I mean, they'd be useful for climbing into the ice bath, I suppose. That'd be good. What do you make of these four today, guys? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments. A musical interlude for you. I'm not sure if it's the hot weather, but I want to listen to songs at the moment about water. Maybe it's cooling me down psychologically. One such song that reminds me of water is the Pyramid Song by Radiohead. I specifically remember picking this single up and listening to it over and over and over again, trying to figure out its secrets. It's a bit like a puzzle or some sort of mystery, that tune. Wonderful drums, almost sound like jazz kind of style drumming, and the piano sound right at the start of the track is absolutely fantastic. Almost sounds like it's been lifted off of an old reel-to-reel -reel recording. The thing I really like about the track is the vocal sounds like Tom York's just right in front of your face singing it to you. It's really dry and clear and crisp. And there's these weird, almost string-like parts later on that mimic 
what Tom's singing. They kind of rise and fall very sort of fish-like. If you want to increase the sensations that you feel with the track, simply put on a pair of the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3, then you'll really be into it. Maybe you could get some fish or something and slap yourself in the face with them. That would work too. Or you could eat a multi-pack of scampi fries as well. Go and check out the Pyramid Song by Radiohead and pretend you're under the sea with Ringo Starr. Thanks for tuning in, people, and watching through to the very end of the video. It's always appreciated. Help the channel out and support us on an ad hoc basis by giving us a super thanks below if you've yet to do so hit that subscribe button click the bell for notifications and also give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies my name's ed bird and i'll be seeing you